This video demonstrates the standard operating procedure for the centrifugal pump in the Unit Operations Laboratory at Lafayette College. When working in the lab, standard personal protective equipment should be worn when working with the centrifugal pump. This includes eye protection, long pants, and closed-toed shoes. During operation, do not allow the pump to run dry by making sure that V2 is always open and there is a sufficient amount of water in the feed tank. When starting up the pump, ensure that V150 is slightly open to prevent damage to the rotometer by the float. Be aware of the location of electrical outlets. In the case of a spill, be sure to clean up the area in an appropriate and safe manner. In order to start up the pump experiment, open valve V148 to fill the feed supply tank with approximately 20 gallons of water. Make sure V150 is partially open to allow water to flow through the flow meter when the pump is started. In this experiment, only the venturi section of the pipe will be used. Open valves V150, V153, V156, and V161. Make sure the following valves are closed. V149, V151, V152, V155, V159, and V160 as this portion of the pipes will not be used. Turn on the pump by pressing the black start switch as well as the power reader by flipping the red switch up. In order to calibrate the flow meter, you must first set the rotometer to its desired flow rate by turning V150. Then prepare for the water to exit the pipe that is connected to V160. To perform this task, place a waste bucket and a collection bucket near the exit. Tear the collection bucket using the scale next to the feed tank. Place the tube in the waste bucket to start. Have one person simultaneously open V160 and close V161. Another person will wait until the flow rate steadies and then move the tube to the collection bucket. At the same time, the timer will begin to count down from 10 using the stopwatch. After 10 seconds, the exit tube will be removed from the collection bucket and moved back into the waste bucket. All the valves will be turned back to their starting position to stop the flow out of the tube. Mass the water collected over the 10 seconds in the collection bucket and pour the collected and waste water back into the feed supply tank. Be sure to record the temperature of the water at several points during the calibration to account for differences in the density of water. Using the proper calculations in order to find the experimental flow rate of water exit in the system in GPM. Plot the theoretical flow rate that was read on the flow meter versus the experimental flow rate calculated from the bucket and stopwatch technique. Linear regression and parity plot analysis will determine if the flow meter is calibrated properly. The objective of this experiment is to find the change in pressure and power of the pump based off of the flow rate and impeller size in order to determine a pump curve. Set the flow meter to a given value using V150 and allow the water to recycle to the feed supply tank. Read and record the pressure readings going into and out of the pump as well as the horsepower being used by the pump. Test multiple different flow rates, at a minimum six in triplicate, in order to create the proper pump curve. With the proper reduction of the Bernoulli equation, this curve can be generated using the pressure drop and the power. To shut down the system, turn off the centrifugal pump by pressing the stop button and turn off the power reader by flipping the switch down. Drain the tank if necessary by opening V154. Replace the plastic cover on the feed supply tank and drain the water in the pipes by opening V149. If an emergency occurred, shut down the system by pressing the stop button on the pump. To learn more about the equipment in the Unit Operations Laboratory, watch the related videos on Lafayette CHBE YouTube channel.